Hey, hey, I'm Shay Warner, and you are listening to Casual Cattle Conversations. If you are ready to explore different management practices and focus on improving your operation and the beef industry, this is the podcast for you. Welcome to the show. I'm so excited you are listening. Hey folks, it is Shay here and thank you for tuning in to another episode. I am excited to bring you a fun episode. It's a different topic than I've discussed before and we are going to be visiting with Tyler McCann and he is a rancher in Wyoming and he is going to be sharing about an event called the Wyoming Beef Roundup and this event is something that he and his wife dreamed up about seven years ago and since then it has allowed them to bring together cattle producers from across the country to see whose steak is the best and I know when he describes the event my mouth just starts watering thinking about all the amazing steaks that are there but I also am really proud to hear that producers are coming together and people like Tyler are putting this together in a way that the event is really impacting their community and creating an opportunity for consumers to connect with um, beef producers as well. So everyone involved in the event is really finding benefit in it. And it's really just a great story, great interview, and a great opportunity for anyone who's selling direct to consumer to maybe apply and see if you want to participate. I know I will be there as a judge. Now, as I was visiting with Tyler, there was a question that really came to mind that I want to, I want you to think about whether you sell direct to consumer or whether you market through a sale barn, whether you sell video auction, however you are marketing your cattle. And that question I want you to think about is what is your benchmark? How are you comparing the quality of cattle you are producing or selling, however you view your end product compared to others? Is there a way you can currently do that? Or do you maybe need to explore avenues on how to create one? So keep that in mind as you listen to this interview with Tyler. With that, let's get on with the conversation. Alrighty, folks, I want to take a quick second to talk about Alltech. Alltech is a global feed ingredient company delivering smarter, more sustainable solutions for agriculture. Alltech's diverse portfolio of products and services improves the health and performance of livestock, and their technical support teams work with you to provide the best nutritional fit for your operation. Contact your local feed supplier or your local Alltech rep to discuss options in your area. You can learn more about Alltech by checking out the link in the show notes. Well, Tyler, I am really excited about this conversation today. It's a little different than my normal content, but I think it is also so fitting because it's about all things beef and even better than that, the some of the best steaks that people could ever have. So with that, before we dive into what you are doing with the Rendezvous City Beef Roundup, that is the correct name, right? Yes. Yes. Before we dive into that, I want to learn a little bit more about yourself. So if you could share a little bit about your background and how you got involved in the beef industry for the audience, I would appreciate that. Yeah. So um, I didn't start out a rancher. Um, I I married into a ranching family. I actually used to shoe uh, racehorses and I, I did. I had a, a big background in the horse business. And I met my future father-in-law through some horse deals. I went up and helped on the ranch he was managing at the time and uh, worked with some of their horses. And in the process, met his daughter and we worked together. And we stayed in contact for several years. We actually didn't, um, we didn't have any relationship at first. And over the years, um, one thing led to another and we, we ended up uh, getting married. We've been married to be 12 years this fall. So, Well, that's exciting. So tell me a little bit about where you're located and what ranch life looks like for you today. Yeah, so we're just outside of Riverton, Wyoming, which is pretty much the center of the state. Um, in fact, where our ranch is, if you draw an X through the state of Wyoming, um, dead center is just about 10 miles northeast of our ranch house so the the ranch itself is very central um high mountain desert we get about we get less than nine ten inches of rain a year um and our farm is uh, about 70 miles west of there uh closer to the mountains 
And so um, my wife and I live on the farm with our two girls. We raise all of our own hay and then we run our direct marketing beef business out of the farm and we calve all the first calf heifers here at the farm. Um, and then everything else on the cows is out at the ranch. Um, we have three large pastures there. Our, our summer range is about 56 square miles. Um, we have a common allotment, so we're in with a few other ranchers on that. Um, and our heifers, fortunately, they run by themselves. Our first calf replacement heifers, they run by themselves on the other side of the highway. And so, yeah, between the the driving and the farming and the marketing beef and the the ranching and maintaining wells, we, we stay very busy. I have no doubts about it. And on top of that, you are a large part of the Rendezvous City Beef Roundup. And so can you explain what the RCBR is? Yes. Yeah, we, we shortened it this year to just the Beef Roundup. Our new website is beefroundup.com because no one could spell Rendezvous. Um, Riverton is the Rendezvous City. So we tried to stay true to that. But um, yeah, I when we started our direct uh, marketing business uh, about 10 years ago we had a calf that was born in a snowstorm and it lost its ears and nose and tail but he was he was a huge calf so we finished him for ourselves everybody that came over um said you know that had dinner with us said that this this is the best beef and we kept hearing that and we got looking around and and there was really no um, no way to prove that. And if you look at other industries like cheese or wine or beer or whiskey, um, they all have some type of culminating tasting event. And so we thought, why, why do we not have something like that for beef? You know, it, it's a multi billion dollar a year industry, and there's no way for these producers to um, advertise how, how they've done and what their flavor is. And so we, we started talking about it. And of course, my wife was the first one to hear the idea. I said, I, I think we need to get a bunch of these ranches together and, and give out a buckle and some awards for like, what's the best beef in Wyoming? So that, that was where it started. And it was kind of the story of one person after another saying yes to it, and it's continued to grow. Increased profitability and informed management decisions go hand in hand. Herd Dog is a data analytics company that makes it possible for cattle producers to collect herd information efficiently. Their smart ear tag monitors cattle 24 7. Think of it as a Fitbit for cattle. Herd Dog fits the needs of a variety of operations as it can find sick animals days before humans can detect illness, and it also identifies which cows are in heat. Best of all, the tags have a high visibility light to help you sort out which cattle you are looking for. Head to their website, which is linked in the show notes, or contact them for a consultation to see how Herd Dog can work for you. Herd Dog is spelled H E R D D O G G. That's two D's and two G's. So, talk a little bit about, I mean, I think that is just such a great idea because, like you said, you look at wine or cheese or other industries within the food space, and they do have tastings or contests and ways for people to try pro product and compare against one another. Tell me a little bit more about the event itself. What does the structure look like? How do people take part in it? What does, you know, that whole weekend look like? Yeah. So we're, we're growing every day. Everyone says, um, you know, this, this needs to be a two day event. And I tell them they're going to have to talk to my wife about that. One day is quite the, quite the undertaking, but, um, we started out with just the, the 10 ranches from around Wyoming. And, um, after the first year, we had producers from other States that saw some of the articles that were written or some of our posts on Facebook, um, and Instagram. And they contacted me and said, um, we love what you're doing. 
could we compete? Uh, and at that time, we were just trying to keep it a Wyoming thing. And there were so many of them, I knew that we couldn't uh, not look into having a, a way to include other producers. And so we, the second year, we started the open division, and that's for producers that are from out of Wyoming. And um, it's open to every state. Um, we have to have a USDA inspected product to ship it to us or bring it to us if you'd like. But we, we got uh, celebrity judges like yourself. Um, we're going to have Dr. Anthony Chafee, the plant free MD. He's coming back from Australia. Um, we've got some other, uh, we've got a couple of actors, got some former musicians, We've got all kinds of really, really cool people that are going to be our celebrity judges this year. But though those people get a, a one ounce serving um, from each of the stakes from around the country, and we give them a criteria on how to judge them. And we try not to get it bogged down in so many details that it becomes it, it loses it. We just hit the high points, smell, taste, texture. We have a few prompts on a card so that they can kind of keep track of those different areas. Um, but we do that tasting event. We do uh, some other educational uh, things throughout the day. We have uh, different speakers that come on everything from direct marketing, um, social media content, uh genetics we we always try and get someone in there that's talking about the actual butchering itself as well those are all open to the public um we really encourage the public to come and take part in this then we also have open tastings throughout the day some of our sponsors like camp chef um they're wanting to show off their grills and they're the only grills good enough to cook all these wonderful steaks from around the country and so um, we take some of those steaks and then I also put in some of our beef and we have a chef prepare that. So you can learn one, how to sear the perfect steak. You can learn some new twists on a hamburger. Um, we have a lot of that kind of information throughout the day. Then we also have our uh, beef and wine pairing class. So it's a ticketed class and uh, you can go in, we have a sommelier come in and they will pair a good wine and a bad wine with a particular cut of beef. And we have a chef cook that. So you're going to get to try about four of those different pairings. It's all local wine. Um, we do that as a lot of fun things throughout the day that are interactive for the public to get involved in. And it's all centered around tasting but it's all educational at the same time. And then our, our big event at the end of the night is the VIP dinner with all 10 of the Wyoming ranches. And each person that purchases a ticket for that will get a one ounce serving from each of the 10 different ranches. And they're all prepared exactly the same. We keep them all separated and numbered. And then you will get to vote on what is the best beef in Wyoming. You, I mean, this is just, my mouth is watering already thinking about it. I mean, I look forward to being there and I just think it's such a wonderful event from the standpoint of, like we talked about earlier, producers having the opportunity to showcase their product, also improve their product with the speakers. But I think even more importantly, how you've opened it up to the public for the public to come learn about how to cook beef and connect with ranchers and really build that relationship and understanding of where their food comes from, even if they are maybe from Wyoming, which is a rural area. So with that, what what has the community's reaction been to this event over the past couple of years? So our community has been fantastic. Um, I, I was really taken back. I went in front of our city council. We put in for a grant um, so that we can do some more infrastructure building and, and put our, put it out more to the public. 
Um, and I had to give my little speech in front of our city council and mayor. And um, one of the members of the council, you know, I, I didn't feel like we were having a big impact on the city. Riverton's only about 10 or 12,000 people. Um, so any kind of tourism is a, is a big deal. I didn't really feel like we were having that impact, uh, but one of the members of the council was a manager of uh, one of our largest hotels. And as I was giving my presentation, he said, I want to thank you for putting this event on at the time that you put it on because it allows me, it's in our slow season. We're in between summer and winter tourism and you're filling our hotel. Um, and one of the restaurant owners commented the same thing. They said, you know, we've noticed, we didn't, we didn't know what event it was, but we noticed an influx of people over that weekend in particular. So our city has really, that, that was really a big honor for me to hear from other business owners that we were having an effect on their business. Um, and so last year it, we worked with our mayor and a local radio show and we did a rename the city for the day contest and you could submit your, your beef inspired names. Um, and then they won tickets to the event and our mayor uh, signed a proclamation that last year on the day of the event, the, the winning name was Muraco, Wyoming. Uh, so it, it, they've really embraced it with things like that. Um, I, we're, we're very close with the mayor and he's very in support of the event. And he is um, going to declare Riverton, Wyoming this year as the most carnivore friendly city in the world. That's cool. Yeah. So we're, we're doing a lot of things that way to try and improve um, tourism, but ultimately our community college, um, you know, I think a lot of people think like an office building when they think community college. Um, our community college just got accredited as an ag school, and um, we have an $18 million facility to open this time last year. Uh, it's an ag and equine complex, and they actually have one of the country's only hands-on um, beef meat sciences division they actually have a usda approved facility within the building where students can go and have hands-on breaking down a carcass and everything from slaughter to packaging they will learn the whole process so they've been a huge partner in this in facilitating this so ultimately our event is a scholarship program for that um, meat sciences and the ag and equine industry that we have supported through the community college. That is very impressive and amazing. And I really like how the more you keep talking about this event, you can really tell how community centered you are. I mean, everyone involved is finding benefit in some form or fashion. So that being said, we haven't talked a little, a lot about you know, what do contestants get out of it? At least not on this interview. I know you and I have had other conversations about it. So what, you know, have contestants seen increases in sales? Have they seen more traction on their social media pages? What are these ranches who are cooking their beef seeing by participating in your event? It, it's been really amazing to me. Um, Every year, there's some new connections that are being made that might not have been otherwise. You know, you, you look at a lot of our events in our industry, and and they always kind of have an angle from from one point or another. And where we're just putting it out there for people to try the flavor, and we don't really have an agenda other than that, we make some connections that might not have been made otherwise. And so one of our producers, they ended up, um, having a documentary series made about them. And so that was really cool. They had a film crew join them for a couple of weeks and film a documentary. We, myself, we ended up on, um, on an episode of the outdoor channels, ranch America, 
uh, which is a great program. And they may be coming back again this year to film the beef roundup. Um, last year's winner, they reported they were out of Michigan. It was Sawmill Creek Farms out of Michigan. Um, they're fantastic. And they reported a 35% increase in their sales per month uh, after winning the award. We work with uh, American Beef Producer Magazine. They put out an article on the winner. And in fact, we, they just did an interview the other day. It'll be in this month's issue of American Beef Producer Magazine. Um, so there is, you know, and then obviously the, the buckle is just the, the icing on top of it. Um, but yeah, we, we make a lot of connections. But that 35% that increase in their sales was just huge. I mean, I was blown away when she wrote me that email. That was almost $12,000 in added income per month. That's a lot. That's very significant for their own business. Yeah, I was just, I was so excited to hear that. I mean, it, it still makes me excited to know that, um, one, that they were smart enough to leverage that into some advertising, but two, um, th that may not have ever even been an opportunity had we not started this. So, I'm, I'm really humbled to know that there are people getting some benefit from some crazy thing I said one day, seven years ago. Awesome. Well, Tyler, where can people go to learn more about the event as far as dates and location and um, if they have to sign up or anything like that, whether they are participants or just want to <laughs> come and view it? Yeah, so we got our new website is up and running. It's beefroundup.com. Um, there's a lot of information on there about tickets. There's a lot of information on there about speakers. This year, we're going to have um, four doctors uh, that are all and, and an influencer that are all involved in the carnivore diet. They're going to do a live Q&A. So there's tickets on there for that. Um you get to meet all of these people. You get to meet you, which I'm looking forward to because I, I listen to your podcast all the time and learn so much about the, the beef industry. So that's that's an added benefit for me. Um, but yeah, get, go to beefroundup.com. All the tickets are there. If, if you can't make it, um, if you buy a hat or a shirt uh, or some of the, the different merchandise that we have on the website. There's new merchandise coming out every day. That will all help. Any of those proceeds will go to the scholarship fund. Um, and if you're a producer that's wanting to enter, there's a, there's a get involved page and it will walk you through just a couple of brief questions about where you're located, how you're, you know, what your cattle are, how you feed, how you process. And um, when you submit that, we'll send you all of the rules. We'll send you some more information that you need for producers to enter. And then um, if you're wanting to, you know, if you're in the cattle business or in the beef industry uh, and you're wanting to be a sponsor or you're wanting to come and set up a booth, if you have a product that will help with that, um, they there's a page on there as well to be a sponsor and we would just love having you come out for the day well awesome i know i'm excited to be there and with that i will put that link to your website in the show notes so that everyone can access that easily so thanks again tyler for being on the show yeah thank you for having me well, that's a wrap on that one, folks. And thank you to Tyler for taking the time to visit with us today and for taking the initiative to start this event. I know, like I said earlier, I'm very excited to attend. Now, if you want more information about the event, like Tyler said, he shared his website in the interview. I will put that website in the description or the show notes, and you will be able to learn more right there. With that, remember to rate and review the show and send your feedback to me. I always love to hear what you guys like what topics you're interested in that helps me find the best guests for you with that have a great day and happy ranching